perfection. Perfection is what we fucking aim for here. Do you fucking hear me, you can? Virgil, the man with the eternal inferiority complex. Virgil was introduced in the very first Devil May Cry video game, and across the length of the entire franchise, the fans have grown to both love and sometimes hate him. This is the second statue for the Devil May Cry 5 lineup from Prime 1 Studios. This is the ultimate premium master line Devil May Cry 5 Virgil EX version statue. Let's get on with the unboxing and assembly. If you want to skip straight to the review, as always, jump to the time shown below. See you guys there. Welcome back. Did you feel that power? That raw hatred emanating from him? I did. Putting that sword together was a real nightmare. And having him stare me out the entire time while I was doing it didn't make me feel any more comfortable. But overall, as you can see, this was a much less intense and prolonged assembly as there was no switch out parts to this statue, which I'm somewhat thankful for, especially after Nero with his insane amount of switch outs. This statue being simplistic in design definitely reflects Virgil as a character. Um, as you can see, you only really need the one weapon to put down an enemy, so he doesn't need those switch outs. Okay, so let's get on with this review. For once, I'm actually going to start with the base, just so we can get that out of the way. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the base is meant to resemble. I'm a 
aware that it is meant to resemble the, the final bloody palace stage, but as a massive coward and not being the best at Devil May Cry, I did not get that far. Uh, the, the base's colour is absolutely beautiful. The pale blues mixed with the purples that you can see throughout. Uh, the spikes, the way the like the clearly crystallised Clyphod top, it just looks amazing. Um, the textures, the, gl the gloss sort of paint they've used looks absolutely incredible. There's, there's no other way to describe how good this base looks. So the spires that surround Virgil himself just adds to his presence on the statue. The, uh, the sort of feeling that him walking towards whichever enemy he's walking towards is making these spires just crackle around him. Just looks great. Um, the shape on the front itself is a complete mystery to me. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it's meant to be a demon's uh, face, head, or perhaps even Sparta's face or head. Uh, either way, the base looks amazing, except for the hair that I uh, found painted into the front side of the base. Um, that was a little odd. Yeah. So, moving on, let's focus on Virgil himself. The head sculpt is great. Not perfect, but great. Um, it's incredibly crafted. The, the translucent resin, yet again, really shining through for Virgil's face. The pale skin um, just looks absolutely amazing. The, the one part I did find that... Um, put me off of this head sculpt personally was that of uh, his brow. Just something seems a little off if you look at it from certain angles. If you're looking at it face on, it, there's no problem whatsoever. But if you're looking at it from certain angles, it does certainly look a little odd. But I feel that that's probably the same case with the, the video game character model as well. It's not likely that Prime 1 would mess up a character model. At least not, not so far that I've seen. Overall, uh, it's a great head sculpt. Um, definitely reflect his superior attitude along with his stoic sort of nature the way he looks at his opponents and just believes they're like completely beneath him definitely reflects that sort of attitude the body is stunning the way the coat was sculpted to show signs of aging through his many many battles throughout the uh, the demon world um is absolutely beautiful the, the finer details at the ragged ends the neon serpentine designs around the collar the arms and the edges of the three coat tails as well just absolutely beautiful just make the make the coat look even better in my opinion even if you look closely you can see the designs uh, the serpentine design is also on the inside of the coat in a different color just looks absolutely amazing the way they've done the shading the color the paint just makes it look like a sort of real leather texture design for the jacket itself and it just looks absolutely brilliant underneath the coat he also sort of, sort of wears a, uh, a buttoned turtleneck with a really cool woven design that interlocks together with more gold buttons as can be seen on the jacket as well. The gloves that he wears are a dark shade of blue with no knuckle covers and no finger, it's sort of fingerless as well. Looks really cool, especially the way he's holding the sword on the hilt there. If you look really closely at certain portions of the uh, the design, especially on the trousers themselves and on parts of the boots, you can actually see the fine stitching sculpted in there as well, which really adds to that authentic look. Just absolutely incredible. The, the, the sort of knee-high boots with the buckles up the sides and um, just really adds to his overall look and I honestly have no complaints whatsoever about the, the body sculpt and the jacket and the clothing. Just really well done, really well coloured, really well sculpted, just amazing. Amazing. Now, on to Virgil's signature weapon, the Yamato. Now, the blade itself isn't really visible, just a portion of it is visible as he's unsheathing it from its scabbard. But that's one of the coolest things you can ever see Virgil do. Because in the game, he mostly uses the scabbard as the weapon itself because he doesn't believe he needs to use the blade on weaker beings. Uh, the Yamato itself is a katana. It's covered in a dark blue, almost like mostly black scabbard. Um, it's really, really nicely sculpted, sort of have that uh, well-aged, lacquered wood sort of look. Um, you can also see dents, nicks, and cuts down the length of it, which just adds to that whole battle-worn, uses the scabbard over the blade sort of look. <laughs> Getting the hands um, to attach the scabbard into the actual like arm sockets was a real chore. It took me quite a few tries to actually get that right. Uh, right. Eventually, I did manage it, but it was not easy. I was worried I was going to break it at certain points because of the way it's made. The uh, the cords themselves, they are not made of resin or polystone. I I'm 
not entirely sure what material they're made of um but they're definitely really really well designed sort of like they make sure that the sculpt regardless of what material they use they made sure the sculpt looked as if it were like a fabric cord um having the interlocked designs there with the sort of woven together fabrics and then printed uh, little emblems down it as well you can also see the emblem on the bottom of the sword as well as just near the handguard uh, for the sword itself the way that the blade itself the, the small portion of blade that you can see the way they've painted it to show the sort of temper lines on the blade itself was really really nicely done as well definitely a nice little added detail just to give off that really authentic virgil look i am um, Overall, the sword really, really does add to Virgil as a character, and I couldn't have actually thought myself of a better pose for this statue. While Nero had an overly dynamic pose, his very static, very stoic, very, very Virgil, so it works out quite nicely. Now, as this is the EX version, not the DX like Nero, this statue comes with a little added bonus. A blue orb super odd looking little counterpart to Virgil but definitely a nice little addition a nice little counterpart to go alongside him that utilizes the same sort of color scheme as the base of the statue so what about the size of uh, this incredible piece the total height of this statue due to it not having any switch out stands at around 77 to 78 centimeters or 29 inches uh, approximately um, its width is around 39 centimeters and depth around 35 so definitely a large dominating statue, but not as wide as Nero was, but definitely has a presence of its own and would definitely look nice as a centerpiece between Nero and eventually Dante. So the main reason a lot of people are here. Is this statue worth the price? Definitely. The statue is actually the cheapest in the Devil May Cry 5 Prime 1 line. Um, this version of it cost 849 US dollars. Um, that's the EX and the standard goes for 799 dollars uh for the standard it's a pretty good price but you would be missing out on the blue orb uh it's an amazing piece a great addition to the collection and definitely goes well alongside Nero and and as i said before eventually dante so what do you think do you agree with me about this statue if not or even if you do uh why don't you leave your opinion in the comments below if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button and if you enjoy my content why not hit subscribe as well um but for now um i'll see you guys next time